Hey guys, David here from Google to 5 Tech Tutorials and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an image transparent. Okay, so let's get started. So basically what I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video is how to make parts of an image transparent so that you can upload it to websites and social media sites and the background of those websites will show through. So basically it'll make the image look seamless. Okay, so basically the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're gonna need to go ahead and in the description below, go to the link I have down there and you're going to need to download this program called GIMP. Now it is free and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The steps are almost the same in Photoshop and other photo editors, however, I chose GIMP because it is free unlike Photoshop and some other photo editors. Anyway, so once you've gone ahead and downloaded and installed GIMP, what you're going to need to do is open it up and then go to File, Open, and find the picture that you want to make transparent. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be making this gray background here on my watermark transparent along with the white text on the inside so that the website background that we upload this to will show through those so it'll look like there actually is not an image there. The first thing that you're going to need to do once your image is loaded up into GIMP is under the layers option, you're going to want to right click the image and you're going to want to hit add alpha channel. Now depending on the format that your image is in, it might be grayed out and you'll see remove alpha channel. In this case, that is fine. If the option's grayed out, that means it already has an alpha channel. However, if you do have this option to add an alpha channel, you wanna click that because it won't work properly if you don't click that. Anyway, so once you've gone ahead and added an alpha channel in the toolbox, you can hit the magic wand tool and you'll be greeted with a few options at the bottom here. You have your mode, which by default is set to replace the current selection. You can add to the current selection, subtract from the current selection, and intersect with the current selection. So just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to add to the current selection just to make things easier. You also have a few options here that you could go through. And finally, the most important thing is the threshold. Basically how the fuzzy select tool works is by selecting colors that are similar. So a higher threshold will mean that it selects more colors that are similar. So in this program here, the threshold goes up to 255. So let's say I have a threshold of 255. If I select a red, it'll select all the colors along with the red. However, let's say I have a threshold of about 100 if I select a red, it'll select red, and it might also select some oranges with a reddish tinge in them. So I recommend starting out with a threshold between 15 and 30, so I'm just going to move this to 30 for the purpose of this tutorial. However, you will need to play around with that a bit. If you find that too many things are getting selected, lower the threshold, and if you find that too little things are getting selected, move the threshold higher. So I'm just going to start off with the background here. And you can see that it has selected the gray background perfectly. And since we have it on the add to current selection mode, basically what I'm going to do is zoom in here. And I'm just going to start selecting the white parts of the text. Now this might be a while, so I'll just come back when I'm done selecting all the white parts in the text. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and selected both the background and all the white parts of the text. So once you're happy with your selection on your keyboard, all you have to do is hit delete and you should see that you are left with a checkered area in the areas that it deleted. Then what you're going to want to do is just go up to select, hit none, and you could see here that the checkered area is filling all the areas that we want to make transparent. Now you could see here that it did leave a little bit. I'm just going to go in again and just clean that up and I'll come back when that is done. Okay, so I just went ahead and selected everything that it missed the first time. Again, I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to deselect. And you could see here that we have successfully made the text on the logo and also the background behind the logo transparent. So the website's background that we upload this to will be able to show through the checkered areas. Okay, so once you're happy with your image, what you need to do is actually save it as a transparent image. So in order to do that in GIMP, you need to go to File, Export As, and to ensure that it always stays transparent, I recommend exporting it as a PNG file. So you could do that by going over here and finding PNG, selecting it, and just naming the file something. So I'm just going to name it transparent watermark dot PNG. Make sure that you put the dot PNG after it. You can use other formats too, such as JPEG. However, this will ensure that the transparency is kept. I've never had problems with the PNG format and transparency, so I suggest making it PNG, but you can experiment with other formats too. Anyway, so once you're happy with that, just hit export. 
you will be presented with this window. You could just leave everything on default unless you're sure of what you're doing. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and exported it to my desktop and you can see here that we have the file transparent watermark.png. If we go ahead and open that up, you can see here that the both the background and the text are transparent. So we could go ahead and upload that to website or social media site and the background of the site will be able to show through. So thanks for watching and I hope I helped. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more, and also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also don't forget to check out my website at www.kagoodafit5techtutorials.com. All the links are in the description below.